Okay, I'm here today with uh, Hartmut Ott. He is the general manager of the San Diego Mission Bay uh, Resort Hotel, and that is a, a Noble House Hotel and Resort property. How are you doing today, Hartmut? I'm doing great. The sun is out. It's warm. We're on the beach. What more would you want? Uh, you know, super jealous. I'm sitting here in Ohio. You are in San Diego. I think everybody understands why I'm jealous about that. So, uh, you know, we'll move right past that. Uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's great to have you on the show. You know, I think, uh, think to open up with, you know, it's great uh, to, to tell the listeners, you and I have been friends for probably 15 years, uh, you know, professional and, and personal colleagues. So uh, I'm really excited to have you and, and can't wait to get into this conversation. We've shared a lot together, right? We can talk about that uh, for an hour or two just by itself, but it's great to see you, Chris. You look great and uh, look forward to our chat. Absolutely. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, your career, how you got where you are right now? You know, it's a long story. I'm going to try to compress it a little bit, but uh, uh, my name is an easy, easy giveaway. I was born in Munich, Germany, and uh, raised there for 13 years. And when I was 13 years old, my father came home from a business trip and uh, told the family, I have three siblings, so we all sat around dinner table, and he said, how would you guys like to move to California? And I was excited, because California, to me, was vacation country, right? I had friends that traveled to California to go on vacation, and they would come back after two or three weeks, and they were tanned, and they had great pictures. So I was like, let's go. So we moved to California. Uh, after seven years, the family moved back to, uh, to Germany. I decided to stay. Uh, my father didn't think that was such a good idea and, and decided, okay, you're on your own. So uh, back then I played water polo and I swam and, uh, I, you know, I, I used to be uh, good looking and athletic. Uh, today I'm just good looking, but uh, um, those days are over, but uh, the athletic days. So I went to my coach and I said, hey, coach, can't come to practice anymore. This is what happened. I need to start making money and I had to think of where to go. And so I went to the Santa Clara Marriott Hotel, which is a hotel we lived in when we came to California seven years prior. So there was an emotional connection. And I said, I need a job now. What can I do? And so they said, well, why don't you start as a, as a bellman? And so I started as a bellman. And I was in front of the door and welcoming guests and, you know, luggage carts and, and walking up to the room, parking cars. And I made so much money. I bought myself a car. I rented an apartment. I'd call my parents and ask them, you know, what are you trying to show me here? This is, life is great. So um, they moved back to Germany. I stayed, uh, went to the front desk, um, ended up moving to Seattle and worked for Sheraton back in the day when it was ITT Sheraton. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. Wow. Yep, that gives away a little bit of age, but um, absolutely. Yep. So ITT Sheraton and uh, did well there and uh, had a good time, was promoted to front desk supervisor, my first promotion. And now I'm thinking, I really like this and I'm good at it because I was just promoted. So I walked into the general manager's office and I said, hey, one day I want to sit in your chair. What do I need to do to get there? So he says, aren't you German? I said, yep, I'm German. He says, well, why don't you go back to Germany and go to hotel school? And so I said, well, I, I, I just got done with this with my father. I kind of don't want to, but if it's to my benefit, maybe I should. So he helped me transfer with Sheraton to the Sheraton Frankfurt Airport Hotel, where I went to hotel school for three and a half years. It's actually, excuse me, it's, it's three years. And um, the program is such that you go to school while you work. So it's a 50-50 split and you travel through each department. So I spent two or three months in every department and consequently I've cleaned 18 rooms, you know, five days a week for three months. I know how hard that is. You know, I've stood behind the dish line and I collected out the plates. I lost the feeling in my fingertips. I was afraid <laughs> I wouldn't get it back. I did. And so, and so, you know, to this day, I feel like one of the greatest foundations of my career was that time because two things, a, I learned what happens in every department and how they all intersect. And two, I learned the joys, but also the pains of every position. So as I walk through this resort every day, I understand the stress factors, but also the joys that everybody goes through. And, and to me personally, I feel like it helps me tremendously in connecting with the team. So after a, a few years uh, in Germany, I tagged on a couple more and, and, you know, front office manager and all this stuff. And in 2003, I returned to the United States 
and became director of front office at the Highlands Inn, which used to be a Park Hyatt, Carmel, a Park Hyatt in Carmel, California. And um, while there, learned, learned uh, uh, you know, a lot of stuff. And uh, one day, the director of rooms called me in the office and the executive housekeeper, and he flip-flopped us from one day to the next. You know, that's the moment in your career where you have a leader that affords you an unbelievable chance and believes in you and really accelerates your growth. So now I'm finding myself in housekeeping. And, and Terry who? Right, I didn't know what Terry was. You know, I thought it was a person. So... <laughs> I had a crash course in housekeeping. Absolutely. And, um, you know, had a lot of friends over the years. And uh, one day I got a call from a buddy of mine um, from a Ritz Carlton property. And he said, Hartwood, you've always wanted to work for Ritz Carlton, which to me was always the creme de la creme, right? And he says, Ritz Carlton is hard to get into, but there's a property in New Orleans and, and they're looking for a director of housekeeping. You know, that's a market where you can slide into Ritz Carlton. So we flew out, we you know, saw the property gorgeous, you know, went down, you know, Bourbon Street, had a great time during the interview process. They were so generous. They invited my girlfriend to come down with me, right? And um, was lucky, got offered the job. And uh, while working at the Ritz Carlton, I got to know, uh, uh, you know, my counterpart at the front office, a gentleman by the name of Chris Cano. So. <laughs> Right. That's where we met. And <laughs> absolutely. Uh, a couple of weeks after being in New Orleans, this hurricane approached. And so um, we were in uh, uh, New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina and uh, in the hotel for five days together and shared a lot of stuff there and have some uh, some memories that will never leave and they will never leave us for our lifetime. Absolutely. And following the storm, um, um, I was then fortunate enough to be placed temporarily at the Ritz Carlton Kapalua. And then to San Francisco, and, and then I had some other stints in the private industry and bed and breakfast and um, independent resorts, and eventually joined uh, Starwood in Chicago at the Western Michigan Avenue, was there when Marriott bought Starwood, was part of that whole transition from Starwood to Marriott. Uh, very, very interesting, very fortunate, really got to know Marriott, uh, was promoted then to general manager at the Marriott Cleveland downtown at Key Tower had three outstanding years in Cleveland. What a great city that is. We had an outstanding time, and I mean that sincerely. And uh, from Cleveland, uh, was promoted to a hotel in Berlin, Germany, um, and spent some time then in Berlin. But we decided, sunshine, California, <laughs> that's home. And so uh, I've known uh, uh, the team here at Noble House Hotels and Resorts for a few years, connected to them, and here I am now in San Diego at this beautiful resort that we call the San Diego Mission Bay Resort. So, so tell me a little bit about your property, right? Uh, you know, you're in San Diego. It's absolutely gorgeous. You know, tell me about your property. If people aren't familiar with it, obviously it's iconic, but would love to hear a little bit more about it. You know, Chris, it's a great story. The San Diego Mission Bay Resort is in Mission Bay. And Mission Bay is, is an area that's 10 minutes outside of downtown 10 minutes from the airport. So the location is amazing. And Mission Bay was actually man-made in the 50s. And the idea was to make it the water park of San Diego so that locals or anybody, but locals can come down and just enjoy a great time at the water. And as a result, resorts were built around the bay. And this resort was built in 1962. And shortly after it opened, it actually became a Hilton. And it was for many years, the Hilton San Diego and it was Hilton's, this is a little, uh, little uh, 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 talking point. Hilton uh, had this as its first resort globally. And wow. Baron Hilton, back in the day, Baron Hilton would take his family here every year for their family vacation. But the resort today has 357 rooms and several different buildings that are spread out over a, a big uh, property. We have an outstanding pool. Almost all of our rooms have water views of the bay. Um, we have uh, 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 an outlet for casual fare with live music every night that we call Plaza del Sol, right? It's all about the sun as it's kind of the theme here, but soul can also be spelled S-O-U-L. So it's also the soul of the property, which, which the employees really bring to life. We'll get talking about that. And then our signature restaurant here is Covewood. And Covewood um, is spearheaded by our executive chef, Roy Hendrickson, and he does an outstanding job and you have waterfront seating. And so 
uh, meeting space, about 25,000 square feet, indoor plus outdoor. And uh, so tons of opportunity and uh, a really great spot and uh, a great place to rejuvenate, relax, and kind of get away from the troubles of today's world. Love it. I love it. Well, it sounds absolutely wonderful. Can't wait to come out. Um, you know, one of the things that I loved about your story, right, uh, is at, at different spots along the way, especially in your early development, you know, you had leaders that, uh, you know, created opportunities for you to be successful, it sounds like, or, or at very least supported you uh, as you were working your way through those opportunities. So, you know, if we kind of play that forward to today, right, you know, what, what do you see as, you know, as, you know, you, your world traveled, you, you've been to a lot of places. What is your, where do you see is your place in kind of the development of, of team members as we're trying to lure them back to the industry at this point in time? You know, it's a, it's a great question. And, and I think there's a few things to consider here. And one is the fun that this industry offers, right? This is such a great industry. It can take you around the world. You can live in many places. You can meet some really exciting people, right? You can get in touch with some really delicious food in different parts of the world. It has so much to offer. So I think highlighting the fun um, and the opportunity is tremendously important. I, I was in an interview one time and I interviewed for a job. And one of the interview questions was, Hartmut, has anybody ever worked for you that has superseded you, right? And in my young days of my career, I said, of course not, right? Nobody grows faster than I do, right? <laughs> so I am climbing this career ladder at lightning speed and nobody will outpace me. And you learn over the years as you mature and as you age, and I feel old when I say that, but I'm really not, that one of the greatest joys and rewards is when you can help others achieve their dreams. And when you can have others achieve their goals, right? And so mentoring and, and helping folks achieve those goals is the most rewarding thing that I do today. And so how do we do that? We get in touch with our leaders. We understand what their goals are. And it's all about communication and development and having regular feedback sessions, right? Goes back to the old saying, we've all heard this. You should never hear a piece of feedback for the first time in an annual review. Right. So how do you get around that? Right. You have regular communications. So I meet with my key leaders once a week for quick sessions and we connect. Love it. Love it. Love it. So, you know, one of the things that you and I talked about as we were kind of leading up to this conversation, right. Uh, you know, we discussed uh, really how economics have changed, you know, greatly when it comes to hotels, right. You know, one of the things that, you know, you brought up uh, as we were kind of discussing what we would talk about today was, you know, really the fact that, you know, the, the commodities uh, uh, supply chain issues are really starting to affect the, the industry just as business is starting to really kind of boom back. Right. So, you know, you have the you have the ability to impact at, at your property, you know, a lot of these decisions. What kind of things are you seeing from a, a financial perspective or commodity perspective? Uh, and and how are you dealing with uh, you know, how are you dealing with with the constantly changing financial situation that we're in? Yeah, you know, it's I I I think we don't need to recreate the wheel, right? We all know what we need to do in evaluating our profit margins. I think what is changing is that we just need to do it more frequently because the cost structure of today's world is changing. You, know, you could feel like on a daily basis. So right now we're dealing with oil prices increasing and, and the activities in Europe and how that might affect uh, 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 you know, different price structures. So I think the biggest key for us is keeping an eye on it on a regular basis. So we evaluate um, our, our menu, for example, in the restaurant, right? We evaluate our menu uh, on, a, on a daily and weekly basis, really daily, superficially, weekly, in more detail. How have prices changed, right? The, the box of lines that used to cost $28 today costs th uh, 83, right? So, I mean, it's tremendous. So how does that impact how we, how we, how we uh, price our items on the menu? And I always take the airline industry as a great example. You know, I don't know if you noticed when the, air, when the oil prices went up so drastically, the next morning, you tried to book a flight and everything was significantly more expensive. <laughs> Airlines are great at responding to what happens around them quickly, almost immediately. 
And I think we need to learn from that. And so we do the same by evaluating different items, restaurant menus, daily, superficially, weekly, in more detail. And then the question becomes, you know, the burger. We have a great burger. And that burger used to cost $21. Today, it costs 26. Right. So the customer that five weeks ago, six weeks ago, you know, paid 21 is asked today to pay 26. So how do you keep up with the perception of value? And so, you know, in our particular case, we decided instead of regular fries, we're now offering truffle fries to have, you know, an added value perception. But that's happening all around, right? And so I think one of the biggest challenges that we're running into is how do we, how do we impact the perception of value? Right. So, so, you know, I mean, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more, right? So, uh, you know, you've got your, your $21 burgers now $26, you know, the average traveler probably hasn't really left their house much in the last couple of years, or if they have, they're just starting to get back out on the road right now. You know, when they left, they were getting everyday housekeeping service. Their room was full of all kinds of amenities, uh, you know, now when you travel, it's, you know, we'll give you a housekeeping service every three to four days. You know, you're lucky if you've got a, a you know, a full toiletry kit in your room, uh, let alone all the upgraded stuff, you know, not to mention some of the other stuff that's gone by the wayside. You know, how are you, how are you balancing the cost and the, and the value perception or the value proposition that the, that the client's getting or the guest is getting when they're traveling? So I think there's a, a few things to unpack here. And, and one is to realize that um, we are charging more today than we did in, in 2019. You know, CBRE says on their forecast, hospitality annually, 2019 ADR was in the 129, 130 range. And today we're in the 133, 134 range, right? So we have exceeded on a national level, all brands all put together, the ADR of 2019. Occupancy is not quite there yet. So so we're charging more. How do we respond? It means in the, in the next step, we need to understand what's important to the traveler of today, right? So if I understand what's important to the traveler of today, then I can respond with making value propositions that make sense. So we know, yeah, I, I, I said at one point, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a, a data geek. So uh, American Express did a survey the other day and responded back that 72% of all travelers say they're traveling and motivated by a family reason. So I'm traveling because I want to spend more time as a family and I'm taking my family of four, five, six, however many to the San Diego Mission Bay Resort because I wanna have a five day getaway and it's a beautiful place right on the water, great food, right? Roast in the sun, that's what I wanna do. Or, right, I, I wanna go visit my sister in, in, in you know, wherever and some travel for that So people travel to visit family. Family has grown tremendously in importance since the, throughout the course of the pandemic. And we also need to understand that 74% of all visitors said they are willing to pay more money than they did before, but they want to know that their money is somehow getting back into the community of where they're traveling to. So, wow. If I know these things, I can now work on creating value propositions that feed into both. Nevertheless, I think we also need to focus on the fundamentals, which means that where we remove the robes out of rooms because we're cutting costs on every corner, you know, everybody needs to decide now, is it time to put the robe back in my room? You know, where we took out the slippers, is it time to put the slippers back in, right? Many of us took that, took out, I don't know, the Q-tips and and the cotton balls and all that stuff, right? Is it time to put that back in? Is it, is it enough to charge a traveler more than before, but all you find in the bathroom is a shampoo and a body wash and a conditioner? Right. Probably not. And so those are the conversations we have on property here. And um, we're trying to be very creative as well. So we can, in the process, come up with differentiators that uh, make us unique and better. So, so you know, looking at, I mean, that mindset, it's not just a, it can't just be a top-down mindset, right? Like, you know, I mean, every single person at your resort is interacting with guests and every single one of those guests has a different perception of value. Every single one of those guests, uh, you know, they're looking for something different. Walk me through how you're going through with your leaders or with your team. You know, how are you building this, 
this this value, this perception of value engine on your property to make sure people are getting the value, you know, at every level possible. Yeah, this is a topic of conversation on property. So we talk about this in meetings and, and we alert everybody to the significance of understanding this piece. And at the end of the day, I can only understand it through communication. So two means of communication with our guests. One is the general guest satisfaction survey after your stay. And we review that on a, on a regular basis, right? So we look at it and we get great feedback, especially um, in, in the commentary on it. So the, 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 the number survey is limited, but you, you learn a lot through what guests write in their comments. But the other, nothing beats face-to-face -face communication. So our leaders um, engage with guests as much as possible. Um, our, our team members do the same, and especially at checkout, even though not everybody comes to checkout, but one of the, you know, we, we learned a lot at Ritz-Carlton. And, and at Ritz-Carlton, we always talk about the fond farewell, right? And the fond farewell always included a, an invitation to return. And so we thank our guests for being guests. We want to find out how their experience was, and then we always invite them back. And so we engage all employees in that, but especially on the leadership level, to, to speak with our guests and thank them for dining with us, thank them for staying with us, and in the process, find out how they enjoyed their experience. Okay, so, you know, I, I think about your, you know, your origin story, right? The hustling bellman, the, uh, you know, the, the, the guy who's working in every single department. You know, what, uh, you know, what does it look like as a leader trying to get the entrepreneurial spirit out of the line level? Because, you know, you know, as well as I do, a as a leader, you're just supporting the team doing the job, right? You know, they're the ones that are actually providing the results. They, they go out into the field. So what are you doing to kind of suck that entrepreneurial spirit, you know, uh, uh, up to the surface and then, and then really make it happen for the guests? You know, I, I think the, the, one of the keys in having a, a really great team is to have a team that identifies with their place of work, right? The, the, the sense of purpose and an identity and belonging is an unbelievable key. So in this resort here, we have about 300 employees totaling 2,875 years of service. The average length of service is 12 years. Now, with the pandemic, many of the employees that have been here for 20, 30 years have retired. So pre-pandemic, those numbers were even greater. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of the employees have worked here for 30, 40 years. Jeffrey uh, works is our bellman, our lead bellman here. He's been greeting and welcoming our guests at this resort for 33 years. And I have stories like this in this resort all over the place. The team here looks at this resort, not necessarily as the San Diego Mission Bay Resort, it could say Hilton, it could say Marriott, it could say anything. This is their resort. And so what happens is I walk through this resort every day and I have team members yesterday that came up. I mean, this is incredible to me. They came up and said, Hartwood, you know, that uh, uh, banquet court over here, there's really stuff in there that's been in there for a long, long time. It has no business being in there. Can't we just get that cleaned up? Right? At the same token, they come up and they say, you know, Hartmut, I went to a, a, a resort the other day and at the bar, they had a little, a little sign with the bartender's name on it and her favorite drinks. And, and why don't we do something like that here? Wouldn't it be great if we can engage the bartenders to that degree? And, and now if Nicole is working the bar, I have a little sign that says Nicole's favorite drinks are, you know, the mojito and, and the margarita, whatever it may be. And, and, you know, now you come to my bar and you sit down at it and you say, oh, what's, what's this? And who's Nicole? And then Nicole says, well, I'm Nicole. And those are my favorite drinks. And let me tell you all about them. So the creativity comes from within. And it stems, in this case, from great tenure and great sense of belonging. And, and so to be honest with you, it's a beautiful thing. I've not seen it in any other resort and then I might add that our, our guest satisfaction scores reflect that. The guest is very happy because they sense this, right? I had a GM once that says, the guest is a human lie detector. <laughs> the guest picks up on the vibe 
of a property. And our guests are telling here that they're very pleased and it all stems from the team and the pride and the creativity they, they surface. So, you know, one of the things that, and, and, you know, piggybacking on what you just said here, right. You know, one of the things that people talk about all the time now is retention, right. Is, yeah. you know, if we can get somebody through the door, you know, I put out a feeler, five people reply, two people show up. One of them hopefully gets hired and shows up for the first day of work. You know, how do I keep that person? It sounds like, it sounds like your team is built almost an ecosystem where, uh, you know, as long as you buy in retention is there. So, you know, what kind of things are you seeing on a regular basis that really drive that retention or really drive people's desire to want to stay? Because I, I think it's different now than it was before. And, and I think it's different kind of for everybody. Well, yeah, you know, it's, it is different. Uh, uh, going back to my uh, data geekness, uh, you know, Gallup calls it the great resignation. The last two years, the pandemic, right? In the summer of 2021, 48% uh, according to Gallup, 48% of all employees were open to hearing something new. 48%, that's half the workforce, right? So um, how, do you, how do you keep people engaged? How do you keep them around? Um, you know, it's, and, and then you look at who, who works, who works, who's the future leader and who's, who's the workforce of tomorrow. And so we're really addressing millennials, right? Gen Zs. And, and so, so Gallup says, What's important to millennials and Gen Z is well-being, number one priority. So understanding what well-being means to the future leader and the future workforce that we're hiring today, right? That's already here is really tremendous. And so I often look at, you know, I admire having been raised in Silicon Valley and I had a father that worked on a campus, you know, this was in the nineties already, but you know, now you look at Google and Apple headquarters. I mean, these are little villages, right? If I work at Apple at, at, the, at the headquarter uh, uh, building, if I want to go shopping, go for it, right? And, and there's, there's nothing that you can't do. Right. And so I always feel like, what can we offer in our hotels that is on a level that, you know, we can never get there, but, but along those lines. Right. So, you know, listen, we have a hard time here with, uh, with housekeepers. We're, we don't have enough housekeepers, but I'm super lucky with the team we have. So they buy rooms every day. They, they do whatever it needs to be done. But then, geez, I might not have enough time to go shopping. So can I partner with, with Amazon here, right? Or other services where I can say, uh, what do you need, right? We'll engage that shopping service. And by the time you come down, there's a, there's a bag here that has your name on it and everything you needed and wanted is ready to go. So you go to your car, drive home calmly. Don't worry about anything because that shopping trip you, you needed to make, wanted to make, couldn't know how you squeezed it in, taken care of, right? Um, you know, does it make sense to potentially, um, you know, um, for kids, you know, we have multiple resorts down here in San Diego. What if we think about hiring a full-time uh, childcare professional? And so, you know, drop off your kid on the way to work. They'll be safe at the San Diego Mission Bay Resort for employees. And at the end of the day, whenever it might be over, right, go pick them up. And so um, those are the thoughts that we have. So we can offer services besides the normal, right? Great food in the cafeteria, plenty right. of uniforms, right? All that stuff, that's a given. You, you can't think about that. If you're thinking about that. You're behind, right? You've already missed the boat. So, so you said it, not me, but so, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if that's what we're thinking about. You know, we're missing the boat here. So we're trying to see how we can offer and again, make us better and have differentiators that the competition, you know, may not have yet. So I'm going to stop it there and not reveal too many of what we're thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, I think that, you know, between, you know, understanding margins and understanding, uh, you know, how to really how to flex with with the changing economic conditions, you know, with understanding how that impacts the, the guest overall perception and, and, you know, what your team needs to do to be able to, to deliver on that perception, you know, regardless of what you have to do financially, you know, then and, and of course, you know, just making sure that you have the team around to be able to execute on that. I mean, it sounds like you guys are firing on all cylinders there. 
you know, that's absolutely awesome. And, and uh, I really appreciate you sharing, you know, some of that stuff, uh, you know, the grocery shopping thing, man, let me tell you, I just got goosebumps on that. Cause that's a phenomenal idea. Uh, hope everybody, hope everybody pulls that one out and takes that one. Um, and it's, but, it exists. It's not hard, Chris, the yeah. service exists. Just use we'll, the app, right? We'll do it for ourselves. Yeah. I mean, everybody does it for themselves I, I, to be able to offer that for the, uh, the associates. That's absolutely if people aren't doing that right now, they, they got to stop what they're doing, write that down and go, go make that happen. Um, so, so, you know, I always like wrapping up uh, with, with thinking about the next generation. Right. And it sounds like you're doing that a lot where you are right now, but if, if somebody comes to you and you know, they're looking to be a leader and they're looking for a piece of advice, what kind of advice are you giving those, those new or first time leaders? Yeah. You know, that's, that's a, that's a great question. And I go back to what I said in the beginning. I think one of my greatest foundations is understanding the different aspects and departments and disciplines within the hotel. So I would, I would tell somebody, get into a hotel, enjoy the ride for a few years, two or three years, four years, right? Uh, and, and, and travel from food and beverage, go to rooms, right? Maybe get into finance if you love numbers. We're business leaders. So understanding finance is absolute key. So spending some time in finance and not just understanding the P&L, but uh, uh, also understanding the, um, you know, now I'm drawing a blank, which is embarrassing, but the balance sheet, right? Absolutely. So the balance sheet is, is, is absolute key. So spending time there, you know, uh, and, and just kind of traveling around through the different disciplines, selling, right? Selling has never been more important. And, and the sales process today is vastly different than it used to be and understanding how we present ourselves out. So take time traveling through these departments and capturing that information because the more you know, in my opinion, the, the more accelerated your growth can be. And so allow for that time. And, and I think we live in a world where we all want, you know, it's, it's apps and it's now and you know, it can't happen fast enough. And I think every now and then it's important to kind of slow ourselves down. So you, you cannot manage something that you have not experienced in great detail yourself, because at the end of the day, you're managing people and you have to know what these people experience, what they feel, what their joys are, but also what their hardships are. So take that time. I think, you know, the higher you end up growing the, the career, to me, it's, it's the absurdity of, I think, also the society that we live in. But we as leaders look great, right? Because our scores, our guest satisfaction scores are high. The financials are fantastic, you know. But who makes this happen? It makes the, the, the folks that are facing the guest, right? I always, I don't like the term hourly employee, but we're all one team, right? But at the end of the day, the reason we look great as leaders, whether you're a front office manager or a general manager, uh, it doesn't matter, is because of the team members that make it work every day. And so valuing and appreciating the people at the front that face guests, which is a demanding job, and we all know it, it's a rewarding job, but it's a demanding job. I think valuing uh, and showing appreciation for them is absolute key. And so, you know, yesterday, I'll tell you, yesterday, San Diego put on a gold key award. It, it's, you know, local organization and a big gala, 400 attendees, you know, all hotels and, and present. And, and we had nine team members and I could have had 30 or 40, but we took nine team members that we donated, nominated. And I took them to have a nice evening together. They were our nominees. You know, perhaps they could have won on the big stage. But just having that appreciation is amazing. And um, so appreciating the people that make it happen is the second piece of advice that would give everybody along the way. Oh, that's outstanding. Well, you know, I think that, you know, you're doing a phenomenal job there. Obviously, you have an amazing resort. Uh, you know, it sounds like things are really firing on all cylinders. Um, you know, I really appreciate you sharing with us. Uh, I hope that everybody takes the opportunity to come out and visit you. So if they want to find out more about your property, how are they going to do that? You know, how do they, how do they find your hotel? Chris has a thing called the internet. Ah, and, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, missionbayresort.com, right? So you want to look us up at missionbayresort.com and uh, find us in San Diego. 
we'd love to welcome everybody. I got to tell you, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a working vacation or what do they call it? You know, I, I work <laughs> in a place that is like a, is a vacation getaway. Absolutely. So I'd love to share it with everybody. And you can find me on LinkedIn. So anybody that's uh, looking to connect uh, with me, uh, I love connections and, and continue the chatter individually or as a group uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, Hartmut Art is the name, which isn't the easiest, but I'm sure it'll be in, in some post. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome, Hartmut. It is great seeing you. Uh, you know, I can't wait to get out and see you in person. And uh, it has been way too long. So uh, with that being said, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to connecting again in the future. Same, Chris. Great chat. Say hi to the family. I will, man. Have a good one. All right. Take care. All right.